Hi, everybody. I'm here to talk to you about coping with cancer and COVID at the holidays. My name is Christine Naputo, and I am a student at New York University. I'm pursuing my graduate degree in social work, and I am doing my second year field placement at the Sidney Kimmel Cancer Center at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. I want to thank the Melanoma Research Foundation and the organizers of this event for the opportunity to speak. And while I wish this was in person, I am so appreciative of the ability to connect with you all on this platform. So my hope for this session is to talk about why this holiday season is more distressing than others, and also to leave you with some strategies of how to um, cope with this very atypical holiday season. So objectives are to reframe the holiday season, know your triggers, learn coping strategies to relieve holiday stress during the pandemic, and learn how to communicate with family and friends during this time. So to start, it is important to acknowledge that the holidays will look differently this year. And so this pandemic is new for us all. A cancer diagnosis may also be new for a lot of us. And so like any new thing, COVID or not, um, it can be distressing and it can invite a lot of anxiety. Coping with change is a very hard thing. And so now with the pandemic, um, there's a lot of compounding uncertainty. Um, this year in particular has a lot of different kinds of loss, loss of loved ones, loss of our health and our bodies as we knew it, loss of our jobs or a shifting of, of roles in our jobs, um, loss of traditions as we knew them, and loss of family gatherings as we knew them. So that's a lot to manage, and um, it is normal to feel negatively during this time. If we are not feeling celebratory in the holiday season, it's important to not force ourselves to feel that way. It's normal to feel sad or lonely or even angry. And so we need to allow ourselves to feel a range of emotions. This graphic says, I feel depressed. I know I should be happy, but I'm not. And that's, um, you know, important to, to um, accept that we don't have to be happy for other people or we don't have to um, feel the same way we may have felt last year or years prior. Um, all to say there is no wrong way to feel. And if we give ourselves permission to um, name our feelings, that's a very brave step. Uh, it's brave to say I feel lonely this year. It's also brave to say I'm hopeful this year. There is no wrong way to go about this. The holidays are not canceled. We just have to reimagine them. So after over eight months, our inability to participate in rituals, both happy and sad, is likely to make many of us yearn for turkey and trimmings, family or personal traditions, and connecting with others. Um, so again, how do we find meaning in this new now? Um, how do we do that? So first, we want to manage our expectations. First, ask yourself, what do I need at this time? Which is definitely easier said than done. It's very common that we can easily ask others, how are you? But also very common to struggle with asking ourselves, how are you really feeling? Um, and uh, secondly, we need to know that everybody copes with change differently. So some people may wanna talk through their emotions, may wanna vent about them to others, and that might be healing for them. But also to consider that other people may not be that way and may want to take their mind off of their feelings, may want to do something, may want to distract themselves. And maybe that is healing for those people. So it's important to manage expectations for ourselves and also for those around us. This graphic is about reframing your expectations and reshaping traditions. So on this left-hand side, we can choose to ignore the holiday. Then we can choose to celebrate in a totally different way. 
Another option is to, con keep, to keep some traditions and change others. And another option is to keep everything the same. So knowing that there are many different variations of how to approach the holiday season um, and know that there is no wrong or right way about it, that is helpful to kind of frame our minds as we approach um, these holidays. So along the same line as that, we have to ask yourself, what are your plans? What are your worries? Have you made decisions about the holidays? How do you feel about those decisions? So again, it's important to take some time to really think about what would I like this holiday to look like? Um, what am I concerned about? And um, it's very common and admirable to want to spend the holidays a certain way for our loved ones. Um, you know, as, as a patient, may we want to celebrate the holiday a certain way so that our caregiver is happy or vice versa. Um, and to just really listen to ourselves and, and think about how do I feel about making that decision? So these are important questions to ask ourselves. And we also need to know our triggers. So um, these are just a few examples, but for example, social isolation from loved ones could be a trigger to feeling lonely. And if we know that about ourselves, then we can think about how to ground ourselves and how to safely see people um, for the holidays if, if that is a trigger for us. Either virtually we could see them or, or safely in person, um, but just knowing that could be a trigger is very um, valuable. Another trigger could be social media, scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and comparing how are others spending their holiday? Are they spending it the right way? Um, am I spending it the wrong way? That, that could certainly be a trigger. Um, another example is uh, thinking about conversation with family and friends about cancer and or COVID. So are there certain topics related to your treatment or related to COVID that um, may make you feel uncomfortable or upset? Um, it's valuable to think about that before a holiday gathering, um, just so we know that um, that might come up and we know what we can do to ground ourselves um, to kind of bring us back to baseline if needed. And we all have triggers, um, so that, that's very normal. So this slide are some guidelines that are suggested by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, specifically for the holidays this year. So ranging from lowest risk to highest risk, um, lowest risk is to spend the holidays with virtual only activities, events, and gatherings. More risk is smaller outdoor and in-person gatherings in which individuals from different households remain spaced at least six feet apart, wear masks, do not share objects, and come from the same local area. A higher risk from that is a medium-sized in-person gathering that are adapted to allow individuals to remain spaced at least six feet apart and with attendees coming from outside the local area. And last, the highest risk is large in-person gatherings where it is difficult for individuals to remain spaced at least six feet apart and attendees travel from outside the local area. So this is something to be mindful of. Um, if you're thinking about having a gathering of some sort, think about what risk level it may fall into. Um, that might help think of ways to minimize risk, um, however you choose uh, to spend the holiday. CDC recommendation for the holiday is here. It says the best practices are defined as socializing only with your immediate household or quarantine pod, meaning the people you interact with on a regular basis, organizing virtual events, and staying home if you feel sick or are in a high risk group for COVID-19. So that is the um, kind of gold standard for what the CDC is recommending for the holidays. And with that in mind, here are some new 
virtual traditions that you can make with your loved ones. So again, these are just ideas, just examples um, that people have um, suggested before. So first you could set up a family leader to keep you organized. Perhaps there's one point person that could gather email addresses and send the Zoom link or the virtual link for the event. Um, having one point person might be helpful in keeping the day run smoothly. The next tip is to consider having a cooking competition. So maybe everyone in the family could bring their laptop or a tablet or phone into the kitchen and all cook the same recipe together um, as a way to kind of make a new memory, a new tradition of maybe something you've done in the past uh, before this year. Along the same lines of that is as have a virtual decorating contest. Um, maybe you each decorate a mini Christmas tree or decorate a different um, menorah or a wreath or, or um, kind of have fun doing something creatively virtually together. Um, another silver lining of this remote world that we live in is that we are able to connect with people that we may not have normally um, been able to see just because of distance. So, you know, if you have family members on the other side of the country or the world, um, we can consider having a virtual dinner with them. Um, and possibly that could be a new tradition that you make. Um, another suggestion was to ask people to bring an item to the Thanksgiving video chat that represents what they are thankful for this year. So another way to um, kind of make a, an old tradition new this year. These are just a few examples. And here are some examples for um, in-person gatherings. So you could choose to keep guests to no more than three separate households, including the host. Consider hosting an outdoor event that can be socially distanced with masks outside of eating or drinking. You can have a buffet set up with punch bowls and past plates um, that should be avoided. Um, um, similar to that, you could have a point person kind of uh, be the person to serve. So there's not multiple people um, touching all the, the silverware. Um, you could also use single-use tablecloths, utensils, and dishes. That way it's an easier setup and cleanup and also um, maybe safer to minimize the amount of um, uh, reusable things that have to be washed or touched. And also you could have all guests be tested for COVID-19 before your in-person gathering. Again, these are just a few examples of, of what you could do. Um, so social media, this is um, kind of talking about if social media is a trigger for you, um, perhaps for that holiday, it's worthwhile to stay off your phone, stay off the computer, so you're not scrolling through looking at pictures and, and potentially comparing um, your day with other people's day. So just something to be mindful of. So ground yourself. So these are some tips if, if we are triggered or um, when we are stressed in the holiday season in general. These are some tips of how we can get back to our baseline. So first is to relax by practicing mindfulness breathing. Um, a lot of studies show that, um, you know, taking a deep breath in and holding it and taking a deep breath out can calm our parasympathetic nervous system and allow us to kind of ground ourselves a bit, um, a bit easier. Another uh, method is to listen to relaxing music. Some people use guided imagery and positive mental images to help relieve stress. So there's a lot of apps on, um, that are free on your phone that you can look up for guided imagery, meditation, um, and you could also spend 15 minutes a day on mind-body techniques, which may positively affect your physical and mental health. So all of these grounding exercises um, can really just be a, a, a quick um, um, exercise that we do um, when we're starting to feel heightened, when we're starting to feel 
um, maybe scattered or, or pulled in different directions to, to make decisions about the holidays or, or just in general. Um, so these are just a few ways to ground ourselves. And so the next few slides are going to talk about how to relieve stress in the holiday season in general. So first is get more than enough rest. Um, we want to pace ourselves. We don't want to overdo it. Um, we want to make sure that sleep is a priority. Sleep is restorative and healing. And the lack of sleep may wear you out and affect your mood. So this is something we all know, um, but myself included, even, even as I read this um, to you all, it's hard to, it's hard to, to do every day. Um, so as we go into the holiday season, if we can make a priority to sleep by a certain time and get enough rest, um, that is a really effective way of relieving stress. And we also want to assess your energy level realistically. So know that coping with fatigue and treatment with cancer can be overwhelming. And it's important to be honest with ourselves, you know, do you wake up in the morning and is today just um, a day that you need to take it easy? Um, take the time each morning to gauge your energy level for the day. Um, and also know that energy levels can wax and wane. So if, if maybe one day you're feeling very energetic and want to go for a walk, um, maybe the next day, you're still, you're a bit tired. You don't have to go for that walk um, that you may have planned for. So as a lot of things are, are changing and um, there's a lot of stress around us, it's important to assess our energy level realistically and, and for ourselves and, and not for the, the people around us. Um, so for patients, if, if you may feel pressure to... Um, um, kind of support your, your, your caregivers um, in, in this holiday season that is admirable, but also it's important to take care of ourselves too. Take care, um, taking care is, is important. Um, how to relieve stress, be open and honest. So um, this is again, much easier said than done. Um, this is all about um, creating healthy boundaries, really. So say yes when you mean it and uh, say no without guilt when you feel it is in your best interest for your health and emotional well-being. Saying no is one of the hardest things, especially for me too. Um, but uh, it's important to think about, okay, if I say no to this, um, that means I'm saying yes to something else that may not be good for me at this moment. Um, the next tip is to accept kindness from others. So don't, do not feel guilty for accepting others' generosity. The holiday season, a lot of people want to be very giving and want to um, possibly call and check in. And, and sometimes it can be hard to accept um, those gestures from people. Um, but uh, being able to, to do that, um, is is a way of self-care and lastly it's important to share your thoughts and feelings with others again that sounds easier said than done and a lot of times I myself will struggle with, with that but every time that I um, allow myself to to share it does feel very therapeutic um, to get things off my chest Um, the next tip is to step back and let others fill in. So be realistic about the energy you may have during the holidays, as we've said before. Um, and um, this graphic over here says, know your limits, make time for relaxation, pick and choose your activities, and nourish your body. So again, what are some things that you need to do for you um, to um, you know, get through the day? And if you need to redistribute the holiday workload, if you need to ask a relative um, to help you decorate that um, wreath for that family event, that's something that you definitely can do. 
So tips for patients. Um, the first is to make a plan listing what you want to do and who you want to see during the holidays. And remember, it can change as you go along. Um, this way, um, you can kind of um, keep in mind, again, what you want the holiday season to look like. Um, again, delegate tasks. Let go of expectations and know your limits. And also stay rested, take time to eat healthy food and enjoy a luxury like a long bath. So these are, these are general self-care tips that more than ever are um, helpful during the holidays. Um, also, uh, despite the holiday season, despite um, you know, previous traditions, do not overdo it with alcohol. It's a depressant and can make you feel worse. So be mindful of that and um, you know that could also be a trigger too. Uh, another tip is it's okay to feel sad. Don't force joyfulness on yourself just because of the holidays as we've said before. And there's also no way to prepare people who may not have seen you since you started treatment. So a lot of times um, loved ones may not know how to carry themselves or, or talk about your treatment or um, may not know how to have a conversation with you about it. So knowing that those uncomfortable situations may happen is helpful. Knowing that that might be a, tri might be a trigger is helpful. And all you have to do is, is be yourself and, and also know that you don't have to soothe them either. You don't, you don't have to um, worry about, about um, how they might feel. Uh, be yourself and um, be, be gentle um, to yourself and, and to other people. Um, make realistic plans. So make plans to accommodate your life today, not how it used to be. It's a very hard um, tip. Um, but essentially just uh, keep an open mind of um, what this new holiday season can bring, not so much what it is not, but maybe like um, what it still is, what meaning does it still have for you? Also make a priority list of activities. So perhaps um, you really want to um, listen to holiday music. Maybe you really want to decorate the Christmas tree. Maybe you really want to sleep in. Maybe you really um, you know, want to watch your favorite holiday movie, make a list of those activities so you can look forward to the holiday, um, even if it looks differently. Um, even though this year will be different from years past, focus on the here and now with an open mind and gratitude for the positives in your life. And also develop a budget and stick to it. Despite financial challenges, um, we don't um, we still want to be able to, um, you know, enjoy um, uh, the holiday season. So um, developing a budget and, and knowing that it might look different this year um, is helpful. Okay, tips for caregivers. Um, so first and foremost, your self-care matters too. Um, a lot of caregivers, and it comes from an amazing place of, of trying to make sure that, um, you know, their loved ones feel safe and, and um, comfortable, um, but we cannot take care of others unless we take care of ourselves first. Um, so whether uh, you are a healthcare professional or um, you're a family or a friend, of somebody undergoing cancer treatment or has gone through cancer treatment, um, it's always important to take some time to take care of yourself too. And also ask your loved ones of their ideas for spending the holidays. Um, a lot of times caregivers, um, and again, it's coming from a good place, want to um, you know, make an, a make a day perfect, make the holiday perfect, um, by assuming that the patient may want it to be a certain way. So just asking um, the patient, um, you know, 
what do you want this day to look like? I think is really um, I'll say, I think that's really um, just refreshing for the patients to maybe hear. Um, and again, if the holidays do not go according to plan, that, that's okay. And know that this is not your fault. So even if you're preparing this alternative kind of day, um, if it doesn't work out, if the Zoom link um, glitches or um, the, um, you know, your, your cookies don't come out, perfectly this this is not your fault and this is not personal um to you so kind of just being open-minded and and um being flexible with a day is is an overall tip um tips for bereaved families and caregivers so um as this year is an unprecedented amount of loss um, I would be remiss to, um, you know, leave this out of the presentation. It, it, it is um, important to make a new tradition to celebrate the memory of a loved one. Um, and so these are just some examples. You could light a candle or eat his or her favorite meal um, to kind of commemorate the person. Um, you could make a memorial ornament or wreath or decoration as a family together. Um, and possibly that can be a way to um, just remember that loved one. Another suggestion is to make a holiday memory box or a holiday stocking where people in the family kind of put, um, you know, little trinkets or that remind them of, of the family member. Um, and kind of um, create a new tradition that way, kind of a um, something to um, gather together and celebrate um, who that person was. Um, this slide is about reassessing holiday gift giving. So as this year may have had financial um, implications that were unprecedented. Um, we can be creative about holiday gift giving this year. So we could shop online when feasible. We could buy gift cards. And the gifts don't have to be the same as they were in years prior. So um, you can make a homemade gift. You can write a card or a letter to a family member or friend. Um, a lot of families um, do Secret Santa or a white elephant, kind of like a a, a gift exchange um, where you only have to get a gift for one other person. And so these are different ways to get creative about gift giving. And I will close with a slide called Hold On to Hope. So um, just um, to conclude, even though these holidays are different than before and, and can be distressing. Um, it's important to know that there is an end in sight to this pandemic and, and hopefully to these, um, this cancer treatment. And so um, looking forward to that and holding on to the hope and finding meaning in this new now um, can be really powerful. So um, holding on to hope um, in many ways this year um, can be very healing. And with that, that is the end of my presentation. Um, I hope that that could be helpful and I, um, I, I know that this, this, this topic is, it's hard and there's many suggestions and, and we're all going through different um, changes. Um, so be kind to yourself, um, give yourself permission to feel. Um, and I, I hope that this holiday season is as seamless and restful as possible. Thank you for your time.